There's a lot of people out here. Yeah. <laughs> I want to first introduce you to my lovely wife, Liz. Is this working? Oh, by the way, this is our anniversary month. Yes. 49 Woo! years. 49. <laughs> 49 years. We got married when we were five. And so. I was in diapers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's incredible. And I remember from the very beginning, we, are, we always said together that God is in our love. Yes, amen. You know, those are little mm. things you say because you're Christian. <laughs> but we truly experience that in our life. Amen. That God is always in our love. Mm. And he covers us. Thank God. So good to see you, Apostle Chris. Amen. We love Amen. you and all of you. And thank you for having us. Uh, Jimmy, I just want to say, you know, you are, um, you're so funny. <laughs> Isn't it funny? No. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Let yourself go a little bit, okay? <laughs> it's, it's all right. But you're also... <laughs> But you're also very prophetic. You're very prophetic. And I think sometimes you don't have to be funny to be prophetic, yeah. right? But it gives you a lot of listening ears because people like to laugh. And when people start laughing, they start opening their heart. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for that gift. And, uh, it's a, yeah, it's a great gift. And... Um, I just want to know now that I know a little bit more about this situation going on here, I'm thinking, no wonder I have felt, you know, a real deep love in here. True love of Jesus. You know, it makes a difference because a lot of people say they love Jesus and they're Christians and they don't love like Jesus loved. But now that I know a little more of the situation, I can see the, how God had brought you together with Mark, with Pastor Mark. And he is a problem solver. He really is. And, uh, <laughs> and we need that in the church, right? <laughs> Amen? We need that in the church. And we don't, have, we don't need to be afraid to use people's giftings that God has given to, to be a leader in the church. All of us are leaders in one way or another, right? Because the truth is that we're kingdom citizens. Are we? Who's a kingdom citizen? Amen? We are kingdom citizens. And the thing about it, you have to notify yourself. Right? Yeah. You really have to accept that, that calling of God in your life. Because not everybody, especially religion, they don't know that there is a citizenship in a conversation that we have as citizens. It's really important. You know, I was just saying before in the other service that, I've been here in this country for 50 years, where since I met him, and, um, and I, I, did, I wasn't a citizen. I was just a permanent resident, which is okay. It's legal and everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't jump the border or anything. But, um, but, but being a citizen, for me, when I became a citizen in 2013, finally, because I didn't think it was necessary. She decided until, to keep me. <laughs> After all those years, I thought, yeah, I think this is going to work. But, um, but then being a citizen, I'm learning, I'm still learning, my rights as a citizen of the United States. It's something like that. If you can kind of wrap your head around that, is that that's how we should, that's our confidence we should be. And really, honestly, when I became a citizen, I felt more confident. I said, well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm one of these people now. <laughs> I'm one of these people in America with the flag and everything. I'm thinking, wow, it means something. You know, countries, many countries are set up that way. But you know who really set it up that way? God did. You know, with the Ten Commandments that people know, they're universal. I mean, international law has a lot to do with, with being good, with not stealing, with loving your neighbor. But who said it first? Right? So we are citizens. What we're doing here this morning is we are encouraging each other. Amen. 
Somebody has a song, somebody has a hymn, somebody has a good word for somebody else. We encourage here. This is not our ministry. This is, I mean, we do ministry too. We pray, pray for people and we sing and we have different giftings in the church. But they're not for here. We are ambassadors. You know who we really are? We're diplomats. So to have diplomacy without love in the kingdom, it doesn't work. So we need to get together, strengthen together like we are here. And by the way, thank you for having us. We are so blessed and privileged and honored to be here. So let's take this love. Don't keep the love wrapped up for special occasions. Let's just keep this love, unwrap ourselves when we're out in the world, because that's really what our ministry is. Thank you for listening. Amen. <laughs> well, y'all can go home now. That was a good word, wasn't it? No, don't go home. Wait just a minute. You know, um, thank you again so much, uh, Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Mark, for having us uh, today to share the Word of God. I never take it for granted. What an honor to share the King's Word. Amen? And it's great to see you all here today. But, you know, um, I am so thankful for much. Of course, my, my wife, we're still in love. But also uh, for relationships. You know, Jimmy said we've known him for how many years? 23. 23. Wow. And just have met Mark, uh, Pastor Mark, but feel like we've known him forever. How many of you know the relationships are powerful? Uh, the enemy hates it. Is it okay if we have a good time today? Amen. I want to share with you one that's really special to me, and that is with Apostle Chris Turney, who uh, I'm so thankful he came today. They have Saturday services temporarily until they get their place at uh, Kingdom Reign Ministries. But there's a real kinship. There's a real, um, I don't know, it just goes beyond words of what God has given uh, for us to operate in the kingdom and not step on each other. Uh, but it just seems like with you guys, it's, it's a God thing. So I'm having you know when we let him do his thing, it's great. You don't care who gets the credit. You just say, God, wow, uh, thanks for using me. I want to ask him to come up and just greet you and to share a couple words and maybe whatever he feels God is saying. And uh, since my time, I, I don't preach long. Um, he can just say whatever he wants. Let's give him a hand. Amen. Come on, let's stand up. Amen. Well, this was unexpected. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. Uh, God bless all of you. So good to see you all this morning. Appreciate the spirit of the house and grateful for the opportunity once again to be in the midst of godly people. Amen. We're all family. Uh, we've been brought together by uh, the blood of the cross, and we so appreciate uh, all that God is and what he's done. I, I just want to also mention that I've known Pastor Rocky going back a long way. We, we've done a lot of ministry together when I was just a young whippersnapper with a mullet. And, uh, you know, I, I had a mullet, yeah. I had a mullet. And, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we did a lot of street ministry together, and so it's so good to, to be rejoined with you. God bless you. But I just want to just tell all of you how much I appreciate uh, your heart in worship this morning. I was so blessed and just appreciate the enthusiasm, the excitement, the zeal, and the passion. Uh, it's, it's, it's to be commended. Amen. Uh, and I just appreciate the purity uh, of just heartfelt worship before the Lord. And um, I just want you to know that is to be commended and, uh, you know, just, uh, just grateful to be here. And so, I'm sure we're going to be blessed by the word this morning. Amen. And I just love Dr. Rick, and he's, he is one of my dear friends. And I met Pastor Jimmy some time ago. I've never met Pastor Mark that I, I can recollect, but God bless you and honor to you. Uh, and uh, just appreciate you. God bless all of you. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> well, today I, I really want to get into this because... Just one word kept coming to me when I was 
in prayer about what to share. And that word is confidence. And I hope maybe some of you will jot a couple of notes uh, because this is not going to be Dr. Rick. This is going to be from the Lord. How many of you believe if he says something, you should remember it? So you say, I'll remember it. How many of you have said that and forgot it? Well, I really believe this word confidence is very, very important to understand, especially in this day and time. Because there doesn't seem to be much that you can have confidence in. Am I right? It seems like, of course, <laughs> you definitely cannot have confidence in the media. No more Walter Cronkites. Some of you are younger ones are saying, Walter who? That you can't have confidence in the government. And that's not to put them down. We pray for them, but uh, there is no confidence there. And there seems to be few that you can actually say, I have confidence in them. And when you do find that, it's a very valuable treasure. But I want to talk to you about confidence today because this is a day and time when we need it now more than ever. And are you ready for this? God has it in you. And he's going to stir it up in you. And he's going to bring it out as a strength that you didn't even know was there. And so I want to start uh, with this word confidence from Ephesians. I'm sorry. Yeah, Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6. It says there, I'm going to kind of go slow, being confident. Notice he didn't say having confidence. He said what? Say it out loud. Being confident. In other words, it's part of our being. It's not just something we have, but it's who we be. How do you like that, grammar teachers? It's who we be. I be confident. It's actually maybe one of my DNA traits. In him. So he says, being confident. Everybody say, being confident. being confident. Being confident of this very thing. In other words, he's going to tell us exactly what we can be confident in. Being confident of this very thing, look at this that he that has begun a good work, where? In you shall perform it unto the day. Of Jesus Christ. Now, when it, whenever the Bible talks about the day of the Lord or the day of Jesus Christ, he's not talking about somewhere out there beyond the blue one day. What he's talking about, if you want to understand it better, he's talking about a season of fulfillment. Amen. So he that has begun a good work in you shall perform it. He shall perform it. He shall perform it. That sounds like it's absolute. But you say, well, Dr. Rick, you know what? I thought he began a good work in me, and it just didn't seem to work out. Who said it stopped working? Has anybody noticed from revelation to what you feel God said he wants to do to fulfillment of it manifesting? There's a middle, and the middle is not fun. Come on. The middle is not fun. The middle is transition, and that's where the enemy tries to make you think it didn't work out. Is anybody here? He wants you to think that, in fact, to make it look like it went totally different. He wants you to think it stopped working. But the devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. The fact is he, whoo, I'm getting excited. He that has begun a good work in you, a complete work in you, shall perform it unto the day of fulfillment. Hallelujah. How many of you sense you're going into a new season? Amen. 
But how many of you know your mind doesn't get the memo? Your spirit is already in a new season, but your mind is going, we're still praying about what he already answered. <laughs> the mind is the last to get it. But our spirit man is already there. So this is why the Apostle Paul said, renew your mind how often? Daily. Because confidence is more than just, you know, well, I'm encouraging myself to think, well, maybe somehow, some way. We have, in much of the church world, been too one-dimensional about confidence. I want to read another scripture that's not uh, on a slide, but how many of you know the Holy Ghost does that? How many of you would like to hear scripture I didn't plan for? Two of you? Is, is, that a, is that a quorum? Three? Four? Okay, I'll go ahead and read it. Hebrews 6.18. It says, By two immutable things, in which it's impossible for God to lie. Has God told you anything? How many of you believe it's impossible for him to lie? It's impossible for God to lie. We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Now, this is one of the few times that you flee forward. This is a few times that it's not about fleeing away. But instead, the confidence we have causes us to flee forward, to lay hold on the hope that is set before us. And it's also called an anchor. How many of you are ready to run towards your destiny? I can't hear you. How many of you are ready to run towards your destiny? This takes confidence. Now, I want you to see this definition for the word confidence. Get ready for your socks to be blown off. Have we got it up there, the slide, the definition for confidence? It's from the Hebrew word kessel. Are you ready for this? It's the loins. Did Dr. Rick say loins in church? Literally, confidence in the Hebrew is the seat of the plant. It is the beginning of the stem that nourishes. This isn't my definition. This is from the Hebrew. And it says confidence is literally where your activation for reproductivity takes place. Where literally what God put in you is activated to begin to come through you. That's why the scripture says, cast not away your confidence that has great recompense of reward. The enemy is scared spitless of you. He is so afraid you're going to keep believing that what God said he will do, he will do. Oh, come on, somebody. How many of you know he's got reason to be afraid? You know, if you're not careful, you could get excited. How many of you know if you're not careful, you could believe this stuff? Because it's the truth. But we have to activate it. We have to say, okay, you know what? If confidence is more than just some kind of vain hoping, then I need to understand it's actually coming from the reproductive loins of what God put in me. Because God never works from the outside in. Never look to how it's going outside to determine what's inside. God works from the inside out. So what are you saying, Dr. Rick? I'm saying to you that confidence is a process. Do you know why God doesn't let you to go into your next season too early? You're supposed to say why. Well, since you ask. He doesn't let you go into your next season early because he loves you. Because he knows if he lets you into your next season early, you would say, I have arrived. And now I'm going to help God out. Yeah, you would have arrived and not even know where you're at. So God says, I'm processing you. I'm building your confidence. 
so that you can begin to operate in where I'm taking you. I like the Greek definition, too. The Greek definition for confidence is parisia. Are you ready for this? It's having impacting boldness that opens. You say, I'm waiting for God to open the door. And God says, I'm waiting for you. How many of you know he gave you keys? Anybody got the keys? Well, I'm waiting for him to open the door. He says, put the key in, unlock it, and go through it. He said, I've given you all the authority you need. I've given you all the power. But you have to have the confidence and boldness that gives you access. Are we good so far? Now, look at this. Confidence simply means to confide in. The level of your confidence will be in who you're confiding in. Some of us need to make new friends. Did I say that out loud? How many of you know some of your friends you should stop confiding in? Because they're carrying it on and calling it gossip. I'm sorry, a prayer request. <laughs> so, this is much different than the first service, right? <laughs> I'm getting unraveled here. All right. We've got to say, Lord, show me the company that you want me to keep. Because they're either going to be destiny drainers or they're going to build your confidence. Because God is at work with something that is beyond you. You are going to produce something strictly from the kingdom that the world hasn't even seen yet. Woohoo! Amen. So who am I going to confide in? This is why God says, I welcome you to confide in me. Because in that you will receive the truth. You'll know. Look with me to Ephesians 3.12 very quickly. Look at what this confidence does. In whom we have what? Boldness and what? Access with confidence by the faith of him. Wait, hold on a second. Confidence gives me boldness and access? You know what? When I was uh, in church... In the Methodist days, in my early, you know, childhood, back, you know, when dinosaurs ruled, the, I remember thinking, I've got to come to God. First of all, I got saved every Sunday, just to make sure, because it was fire insurance. But I remember I would come every Sunday, and I would approach God as though he was ready to walk me over the head. But then I began to understand, wait, God has seen me as I'm supposed to be. How many of you believe you have a blueprint that he gave you? That's what he sees you through. So now he says, you can come with confidence and boldness, oh, come on, somebody, and have access. I'm no longer having to step in, even though I deeply uh, fear the Lord in, in, in the admiration, and I come to him that way. But I have access as he's my daddy. He's my Abba Father. I can come boldly into the throne room because the confidence I have is no longer mine, but it's his. Hebrews 3.14. Are we good? Hebrews 3.14. Now, this will give you another dimension of confidence. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Wow. Can I just encourage you? You know, this message is not meant to make you feel like you're beat over the head because, well... Dr. Rick, I've kind of doubted here lately. I've kind of been going through uh, some things. Can I tell you, we all go through some things. Can you say amen? We go, go through those conversations with God. I, you know, Liz and I went through that bug, and thank God it left us, and the king is still a healer. Amen? But we're in the middle of it. I wish I could say I was a man of faith and power all the time. But I'm going to tell you, there was a couple of times going, 
God, I'm your servant. Why am I having to face this? And I remember one time walking into the bathroom, we got a big old mirror, and I saw that, that very pathetic looking kid. And I started laughing. How many of you believe it's time to start laughing at ourselves and taking God more seriously? And I couldn't stop laughing. I'm like, oh, this is God's man of faith and power. Look at this. <laughs> and God said, hold on to your confidence. Come on, somebody. Hold on to your confidence. Because I got greater things for you to do. And this will pass. Can you say amen? amen. Don't let the world make you think that this junk out here is going to keep on. That's a lie. God has already won the victory. Oh, amen. So now, I am a partaker if I hold fast the confidence. And one more scripture. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, this isn't talking about that old-fashioned uh, prayer, Lord, if it be thy will. That was pathetic prayer. I mean, we all had to learn. But when he says, ask according to my will, he's given you his will. He's given you his word. He's given you his constitution. He says, I've freely given you all things in my kingdom. But if you will line yourself up to my truth, no matter what it looks like, no matter what you feel like, and begin to say, Lord, Activate that confidence on the inside of me. Activate that reproductive ability to manifest what you said. He said, I'll do the rest. Can somebody say amen? If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And guess what? He goes to work. 